I want you to bless him. Lord, you are my everything. Bless him everywhere, inside and around. Please make sure you lift up your voice and just bless him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We bless your holy name. Zeba kapa shabrende kapala da bosh. Zembrede kapala kapo sete brosh. Mambros kapa kresta paria da bala da baka sabrende kete pele de bosh. Raka pa kapa te kete pele de boko sofrende prati kapa kasha da bala da ba. Zebrendo kapria da bala da bos. Unto you shall the gathering of your people be. Zimena kosha prianda balada breska paria da balada ba. Zembo koso prato shapalada bash. Go ahead and bless him in tongues. Bless him in the spirit. Mam proske prandi jeleke tefra da balada bash. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies, builds up, empowers. Prepare your heart to receive. Sige balaka pros kimbre di shabala kati anabaka se brega de balada ba. Jeka ba 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 mam pros ke pros kabali ke pres ki balada ba ka brega de balada da. Ziba da 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 balada da 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 ba ka se brega de balada da. Make sure you are praying everywhere. the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let it cover From a generation that is desperate for revival, let it cover all. Let it cover the north. Let it cover the south. Sing. Let the weight of your glory fall. Lord, we want to see revival break out in cities and nations. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all. 
as a desperate one. ago as a desperate communication of the spirit it was a desire to see the fire of God it was a desire to see authentic apostolic revival break out in cities it's a very very prophetic song these are deep songs these are the kinds of songs the Bible calls the songs of Moses songs that stem out of a bowel of hunger they are not songs to make money. They are not just songs that you communicate to while away time. It's a song that you sing when you truly have passion for the things of God. Can we sing this song one more time with revelation? Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory fall. In Mount Zion, the side of the north. Let it go. Beginning from us, O oh Lord. communication of our desire for true revival. That's all, just a very simple song. Cry say, Yahweh. the veil. Let the veil be rent into two and let us see deeper. Holy is the one who reigns. Holy is the one who reigns. Worthy is the one who sits up fire. Mabala Basila Mambre Shalakari. 
Sheba Kapra di la Manakata. Sika Parakatai. Come on, just press and let's worship for a while. There is a spirit of worship. Adonai, you're the Lamb of God. You are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, you're the Lord of lords. This is our travail tonight. Let your kingdom break. Sing in the spirit. Sing in the spirit. Sing in tongues. God I tell you the portals of heaven are open mightily over this place the hunger of a man can draw the presence of God and when he shows up you are changed 
As we bask in your glory, oh God, let us be changed. We are the uncompromising remnant that will not bow. We will travel until we see the glory of God arise upon this nation and upon the continent of Africa. We travel on behalf of Nigeria, the firstborn of God in Africa. We will not sell our birthright, but we will contend to represent authentic apostolic Christianity to the nations. We strive to see your kingdom come. This is our desire, Lord. Beyond everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to just pray one prayer and say, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your glory be revealed. Let your kingdom come. And then the eyes of the blind will be opened. When his kingdom comes. Then once again we will hear the authentic sound. Of the shofar of the spirit. It will rise above every noise of religion. And every noise of tradition and falsehood. Hallelujah. Jesus, we seek only one thing, not the building of a ministry, not the fame of men of God. We seek only one thing, that we become envoys of your kingdom, men who are furnished by the fires of the Spirit. Men of understanding and power. Men of light. We give you praise. Tonight I pray that the bread of the Spirit be broken. We contend for the hallowed bread of the Spirit. Show us deep things, O oh God. Cause our eyes to be opened. Reveal your glory in strange dimensions. Open us up, O oh God. Let the seals be broken. Let the scroll be open. And let our eyes see. Show us what the Father saw. We contend for the ancient part. We refuse to be deceived. Let the light of God take us to the holy hill of the one who called us. And may we become mighty men. May we become mighty men. There is an end to this pursuit. We are not chasing after shadows. We are not um, 
we are not just trying to do the things that we are doing because we are alive and we have to continue the traditions of religion I need you to know that God is so grateful when he finds a people who are interested in him not just what he can give not the prosperity not marriage men who are addicted to the values of the kingdom who love him above and beyond what this life can give hallelujah we are the hope of this world you must believe this don't ever think you are little for in the days to come even the the smallest spark of light will be of benefit to men gross darkness will come upon this earth it's already happening but the bible says upon you it says you will arise and you will shine not only will you shine the light you will become the light hallelujah the secret of spiritual growth is progressive revelation there is nothing else that can make a man grow the bible says that when god made man in the garden of eden the life that they had was supposed to be sustained by the continuous eating of the trees of the garden they were not eating it for hunger they were eating it because it had the capacity it was called the tree of life it had the, the capacity to give life and that tree is the accurate revelation of the word of God so as we receive the word of God there is an unveiling of the reality of this life this Zoe life that we talk about hallelujah praise the Lord I'm excited because many of you may not realize that every great revival started with a movement that was concealed people did not know that this was how far god would go until the fire became so much that no devil could stop and he began to move from city to city hallelujah there's an army rising There's an army There's an army Rising up To break every chain Break every chain Break every chain Break every chain Can you just sing that part? There's an army rising up. There's an army. Rising up. We are this mighty army. There's an army rising up. There's an army that is rising up. There's an army. We're rising up. Break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The prophet began to speak. Malachi, the prophet, started speaking and he said, There will be a sign that will characterize the coming of Jesus. He says, Shortly before the day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. Hallelujah. Did you know? That the Bible never tells us anything about Elijah's birth, origin. It just tells us this, this wicked system, this she goddess called Jezebel, who was married to the king, 
Jezebel was a witch. She was not a wife. That's why she reappears in Revelation again. In the book of Revelation, Jezebel reemerges again. Hallelujah. The personality Jezebel was an adumbration of a system. Hallelujah. And the Bible says during her time, the prophets of God suffered so much. The prophets of Baal were reigning and they locked up and killed the prophets of God. Suddenly, a strange man without origin just emerged. The Bible says, and Elijah the Tishbite from where he came we don't know we don't know who where he was taught the things that he knew the bible says he was a representative of a spirit elijah represented the sword of god and the bible says when he showed up he showed up for one assignment to conquer that she goddess and afterwards he left who is this strange man because we see him reimagine again jezebel is still in revelation elijah is still in revelation where did he come from did he just appear and Elijah the Tishbite? Where was he trained? Who taught him that the eye of witchcraft could not find? And Elijah the Tishbite rose up as a cry. The prophets of God were suffering. Only about 400 of them were being kept in disguise by a man called Obediah. No prophet could lift up his head and prophesy the counsel of God. And the Bible says in response to their cry, one great prophet, Elijah the Tishbite. A single man who terrorized the system of Jezebel and brought her to her knees. And the Bible says, before the day of the Lord, Elijah will come back again. But he will not come back as a person he will come back as an apostolic generation are you getting my point and is in the similitude of what was adumbrated in the old testament nobody understood nobody knew about the training he was it was a strange manifestation the bible says elijah the tishbite and this is the making of elijah's the spirit the authentic spirit of prophecy that will arise this is how his kingdom will come. Hallelujah. And Elijah the Tishbite suddenly showed up and he began to cause havoc to this godless system. I need you to know that you are a representative of this spirit of Elijah this authentic apostolic and prophetic spirit and the first assignment of elijah is to destroy the altars are you getting my point the first assignment of elijah is not to call the names and phone numbers of people the first assignment of elijah is to come in with a dimension of god that has not been seen that will bring the powers that be to their knees this is why i raised this song to break every chain a reemergence of the Elijah spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight I have I've just been praying for the teachings that we're going to be bringing that not only will we get puffed up with rema and knowledge. Hallelujah. But that these teachings will sustain an ability to cause radical transformation in our lives. We have said this is a season of light. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there is a level of light that you carry. You become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. This is what we are training. We are training you to become a light. A light. You will be so bright, the powers of darkness cannot ignore our job is to expose the works of darkness and to bring people to accurate spiritual understanding hallelujah thank you jesus first timothy 4 verse 1 let's rush
He won't stop till we look just like Him. He won't stop. He won't stop till we look just like Him. God is birthing something strange in this day. God is revealing something new in our midst. He won't stop, He won't stop until we look just like Him. He won't stop, He won't stop. First Timothy 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Stop. The Bible says in the latter time, there are certain people who for some reason will depart from the faith and will begin to give heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons very interesting it didn't say doctrines that were taught by demons doctrines that were manufactured from the pit of hell and brought taught accurately by demons verse 2 speaking lies in hypocrisy and having their own conscience seared with hot iron verse 3 forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from food which God has created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth the last verse was for for every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving let's just stop there hallelujah we are examining three things tonight tonight we are going to be studying the scripture hallelujah Everybody say, I receive light. When, when our eyes are open, we will be able to mature and comprehend the things of the spirit deeper. Let me tell you something. Listen. Do you know what scares demons and principalities and powers? It's not the statue of a man or woman. Are you getting my point? It's not your English. It's not your degree hallelujah but the degree of light the degree of light when you see the spiritual structure of a believer you can know his level in the spirit by the degree of light are you following me now so at the mount of transfiguration jesus revealed to us how his spirit man was are you getting me it was light so bright that the people could not comprehend it and every time we come before his presence by revelation we keep contending to attain unto that dimension of light and the degree to which we conform to that light is the degree to which we rise to maturity and that's a product of revelation the difference between revelation and information is that revelation transforms information just gives you awareness if it is revelation it must change you it was designed to change you if you truly understand it hallelujah praise the lord the bible says in the latter days verse one again please that men will give room to deceiving spirits who are these spirits where did they come from what is their ministry please pay attention brothers and sisters we are in a day an age that if you lack spiritual intelligence you will die are you following me now we need it as a matter of urgency in every generation there is always a contention of light and darkness there are people who just go around as social beings but there are certain people who understand spiritual things and are anointed to communicate the counsel of God to make sure 
that the banner of the kingdom is lifted throughout that generation and we happen to be that generation so it's important for everybody to pay attention there's a lot of error going on in the body of Christ listen please hallelujah and the error that is going on in the body of Christ is so deep it calls for immediate response hallelujah if we do not respond to the tragedy that is happening in the body of Christ and we allow this Jezebel to strangle away the prophets of God if Elijah's do not arise a time will come there will be no prophets who will speak the counsel of God are you following me now there's a lot going on in the body of Christ the continent of Africa and especially our dear country Nigeria Nigeria is the firstborn of Africa we are the model to the, the continent of Africa in terms of spirituality hallelujah and it's important that we preserve the things of the spirit There are three errors in the body of Christ that we trust God to address and correct tonight. Hallelujah. It's called apostasy. You know what apostasy is? Apostasy is a departure from the accurate truth of God's word. A departure I preached a message I think it was last year or year before last the apostate church you can get it and listen a departure from not listen listen please I, I don't mean the departure from a doctrine I mean a departure from the known patterns of God everything about the building of God's kingdom is not left for the discretion of man are you following me now there is a pattern God in his nature will not allow man to build his kingdom his own way it has always been the character of God to create a pattern for man to access him so apostasy is when by the activity of wicked spirits men begin to deviate from the accurate pattern of God and the Bible says this will happen in the latter times that some will depart from the faith what faith christianity no 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 god never called us christians what is the faith the pattern there is a pattern that our fathers followed they knew something that made them walk with god they knew something that made the, the kingdom of darkness quake before them and there is a gradual deviation please listen to me the church in Nigeria is deviating fast. And there's got to be an, an intervention of Elijah. Because the few prophets of God who are left in the country are facing a lot. Jezebel is, is prospering on our pulpits, in our churches, across different places. And the prophets of God, the true prophetic and apostolic voices are being quieted until Elijah rises. And that there be an open contention between light and darkness to return the body of Christ back to pattern. Otherwise, we are going to lose it and we'll miss it, not just as a continent, not just as a nation, but as a people. Hallelujah. Say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 13, verse 25. Matthew 13. Jesus began to explain to us the tragedy that will befall the church. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Let's start from verse 23 or 24. Let's, let's make it 24. 
and another parable he put forth to them saying the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed that man listen that man is god and his purposes and counsel so how did he start he started with good seed is that true he sowed good seed he created a pattern but something happened 25 the first four words one two go but while men this is how the spirit of the antichrist began to enter the church he began to cause men to sleep the bible says that a time came when the eyes of eli started getting dim and remember the bible says the eye is the light of the body that means if your eyes closed there is no more light no more illumination there's no more access to divine things and the bible says that the eye of eli started getting very dim and that continued until it got to a point where men slept hallelujah while men slept when they began to intercourse with babylon when they began to respond to the promptings of this antichrist system when they began to do ministry by doctrines and patterns and methods that are not consistent with the way of god the bible says they started giving heed to deceiving spirits are you following me please and they started embracing the doctrines of demons and men slept and then the enemy came and did what so tears this is what is happening to the nigerian church there is a mixing of that which is authentic with that which is counterfeit and all of them are being mixed in our churches in our parishes in our assemblies and right now there is so much confusion it will take the accurate eye of the eagle that is brought forth by the spirit of elijah to divide between bones and marrow and show the church that no matter how this looks this is not of god hallelujah because the bible tells us something verse 26 it says but when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop then the tears also did what appear that means when they sowed it it was there as a tendency but it had not yet manifested are you getting my point now a lot of people started ministry hearing the voice of god but they did not stay in the spirit for the holy ghost to keep walking walking on them and pruning out anything that does not become like christ eventually as the ministry started expanding as the membership started expanding they noticed a strange thing happening in the assemblies that there were also tears that were growing verse 27 it says so the servants of the owner came and said sir did you not sow good seed in other words who gave these pastors this message where did this rema come from where did this doctrine these revelations that we have built ministries we have held conventions and meetings with teachings that have no bearing with the patterns of the kingdom the bible says they ask a question did you not sow good seed what happened on the way how then does it have tears 28 this is what made a lot of men of God think that what they are doing is right because in the wisdom of God and for the sake of we the elect of God he said no the, see he said the enemy has done this and the servant said to him do you want us to go and gather them that means should we start pruning he said no nah, in the midst of these tears there are genuine people they are not strong enough to stand the heat of separation so let them grow verse 28 29 now he says but he said no less while you gather up the tears you will also hurt the wheat are you getting my point now and so god allowed many churches and many ministries to grow in spite of their wrong doctrines money was still coming are you getting my point membership was still coming and because of that a lot of people thought it was an endorsement that they were doing the right things but right now the spirit of elijah is suddenly showing up because the 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 wheat has become matured enough for the separation to begin to take place 
And the Bible says, 30 now. Let both grow together. So no problem. Let the church grow. Even with the error, no problem. I will have a way by my wisdom to manage it. But a day will come, the separation will happen. Are you getting my point now? There are so many people that have stood upon our pulpits and said a lot of things that have God has no hand in it at all. There are many conventions in this country that God has no business with what is going on. Are you getting me? They have organized God out of church programs. They have gone for ministers' conferences and imbibed doctrines of demons by men and women who have no altar at all. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, let them both grow. So they came back, applied these things, and it seemed to be producing results. But right now, it has gotten to a point where it's destroying the remnant of the house of God. And except the spirit of Elijah arises and addresses it, the casualty will be too much. It says, until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say unto the reapers, this is a strategy. First, gather together what? This is why we are beginning to attack these things because the season of the harvest is here. The Bible says, you guys are farmers speaking to the nation of Israel. He said, there is a way you can look at the atmosphere and you will know that the harvest is near. And bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So, it started with good seed. The man of God started as a genuinely anointed person. The ministry started as an authentic ministry but eventually while men began to sleep the bible says a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the eyes and it says poverty is not just lack deprivation of all sorts whether spiritual material and otherwise will come upon you suddenly like an arm bandit so these men began to sleep hallelujah and it was in that sleep you see this is listen how many of you have read the story of samson and delilah samson was a type of the church delilah was a wicked spirit are you getting my point now notice that samson was called to be a judge over israel and the bible says savior shall arise everything in the bible is prophetic it's an adumbration of something an adumbration means a foreshadow are you getting me? A prophetic preplay of something that would happen. Samson was a man who was strong and he terrorized the Philistines. And then the Bible, notice every time men who symbolize the government of God appeared, it was women that threw them down. Not women, they were physical entities. But this woman, you know why woman? Because women have the capacity to give birth and reproduce their kind again. This is why the Bible calls this Babylon, this harlot in Revelation 17. It says she's a woman that sits upon a beast that has seven horns, seven heads and ten horns. Are you learning something tonight? A terrible tragedy happening in the body of Christ. And listen when delilah came to samson she studied his weakness are you getting my point she carefully studied it she did not come with a sword i want to show you the mystery of men sleeping and the bible said she came and she donated her love free of charge for him correct the first time you see the nature of the glory of god is that the glory of god does not depart suddenly when the glory of God in the vision that was shown Ezekiel, when it was leaving the temple, it left slowly. Paradventure, the people would realize and repent. Hallelujah. The first time it happened, notice what is a woman looking for, trying to know the source of a man's strength. She didn't say, marry me. She didn't say, sleep with me. She didn't say, give me money. Are you following me now? She kept saying, Samson, 
tell me the mystery behind your strength all she was concerned about was his anointing because it was with that anointing he will conquer the spirit of the antichrist are you getting me she wanted to kill the source of his strength and she found out that there was a relationship between his eyes his hair and his strength that was why when she captured him the first thing that happened was his hair the second thing that happened was his eyes I need you to know that all these women you see in the Bible they were not normal they were envoys of demonic entities because they did certain things that did not make sense for instance why will Herodias ask her daughter for dancing well she said make sure you tell the king that I want the head of John the Baptist what do you do with head are you getting my point now there are many things that happen in Bible that if you don't read with the spirit of revelation this is the error that many people have carried they have just read it theologically and they have bought for doctrines that are not accurate but the spirit of Elijah comes dividing the word of God accurately hallelujah all through scripture we'll do a quick drive if it's possible as we as we continue and let me show you that disguising through people and stories has been the same battle the battle of light and darkness are you getting my point now for instance the bible tells us that before the coming of the lord again there will be a repetition of the days of noah did you read that in your bible what happened in the days of noah because you see when satan fell when satan fell there are so many things in my head now Let, let's just continue wherever we stop do you know what satan told the angels that made them to comply don't you think satan would have told them something that was really captivating for them to leave their estate and to come down to partner with him are you getting my point now because of satan's access to the presence of god he had knowledge of mysteries and the bible tells us that this man called satan or then the son of the morning rebelled he had a he had a political ambition all this ambition didn't start from the politicians there is a spirit and he he made this manifesto clear in isaiah 8 uh, in, in 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 um uh what now isaiah 14 now I will do this i want to arise above the stars of god i want to be like the most high that was his manifesto but he deceived all of these people and when he was casted down he was casted together with a lot of other angels hallelujah and then when adam came i told you again that the garden of eden is not in the earth realm are you getting me that's why they cannot find it the garden of eden is still intact you go to the book of revelation you see the garden of eden still there with the tree of life nobody has taken anything that garden was withdrawn are you getting me it was a supernatural sphere the reason is look at the things that covered the garden a cherub and a flaming sword can a cherub and a flaming sword just cover something that is just three-dimensional hallelujah and man was driven out of that garden but there was a prophecy and this it was that prophecy that started this great battle are you getting me the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent and satan knows that every time jesus speaks he already has a strategy are you getting me please follow this when one of the errors that i want to correct i hope we'll be able to establish it is how many of you have heard of that thing called familiar spirits have you heard that statement i will show you the origin of the activity of what we call familiar spirits familiar spirits are not just out to monitor your life they are out to monitor the strategy of the spirit for every season Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Where do we start from? Okay. 
Are you getting my story now? And then, when Adam and Eve, when Adam knew his wife, and she gave birth to Cain, listen please, Satan thought that Cain was going to be the person that God will use. Because they, he knew that God would need a man. Are you getting me? So Satan entered Cain. Are you getting my point now? See, I'm talking of the activity. Please, let's go to 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 again. The, I want to show you the ministry of these deceiving spirits. Can you see where it started from Lucifer? Deceive the angels. Are you getting my point now? And they came down when man fell. Deceived Eve. Satan always changes the patterns of God. Because every time God, when God designed family, please listen. And, and, and ladies, you have to listen. This is a very powerful message. When God designed family, I hope you know that God made man the head of that family. Is that true? That means any correspondence through God, according to his structure, should go to the man. Notice how Satan changed it. Satan went to the woman. Are you getting me? And everywhere you see the manifestation of his spirit, the woman there, that figure tries to usurp it on the man. Jezebel. Are you seeing now? Herodias. And all of these kinds of people. This is what the Bible calls the devices of the enemy. Stratomai, the Greek word. His methodology. It may have changed and metamorphosed through seasons. But the pattern is the same. That means when you sustain the eye of prophecy, you can detect him at once. Are you learning something, please? So Cain is born and Satan makes a bargain with Cain. And Cain begins to manifest another spirit. And then the Bible says how that Abel shows up. And Satan, suspecting that God may use Abel, began to move Cain to kill Abel. Are you seeing why Cain? Why will Cain kill his brother? See, it's time for you to begin to study the word, not just to get sermons, but for spiritual knowledge. Ask questions. Why will Cain just kill the, his brother? What for? Are you getting my point now? When Cain killed his brother, in a passage of time, the Bible says Cain started building a city. The Bible never told us that Cain was an architect. What made him to start lusting after building a city? It was the spirit of the Antichrist. Are you seeing? Because God wanted to build a city and name it after his son. So the spirit of the Antichrist through Cain built a city and named it after Enoch, his son. And that was where atrocity started from. Are you getting my point now? And then it got to the time of Noah. God suffered long with them. When it got to the time of Noah, listen to me, listen to me. Noah was a very strange man. He was not just an old bald headed man. Noah walked with God. Are you getting me? Noah had a manuscript that he used to build the ark. The ark was not just built carelessly of gopher wood and so on and so forth. It was a prophetic message. Are you getting my point now? Noah had secrets that he knew that made him the head of the spiritual activity of that generation. He talked with God. He communicated with God. He understood the mystery of the flood. And that was the reason why, listen, please, listen, listen. When they came out, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, there were eight people again. Satan started looking for somebody else to enter. Are you getting my point? So Satan entered Ham. Are you getting my point? And the Bible says he saw his father's nakedness. He did not just see his father's nakedness. It's a coded word. He saw into the secret of what Noah was supposed to preserve. Why will a man curse his son for just seeing his nakedness and say you will be a servant of servants? Is that cost not too much? just for seeing a man's nakedness what of children that take care of their parents in the hospital and have to bath them and do other things it was beyond just seeing a physical nakedness it was opening something spiritual that he was not prepared for he was it was every time men shifted from god's patterns they suffered this was why he caused king i mean harm and the cause that was given to Ham, if you read your Bible very well, was that he was going to serve his brothers. 
is that true now satan found expression through harm go to genesis 11 don't you i mean you don't need to open it but go to genesis 11 what happened suddenly another wizard who was the son of kush who was from the lineage of ham are you seeing now a man called nimrod nimrod strange man just appeared from nowhere a man who commanded such power he was a lord are you getting my point now how did nimrod gain so much influence and the bible says nimrod was a hunter we never saw one animal that nimrod hunted what was he hunting i will show you in the book of revelation that he was hunting for souls because satan suddenly realized that destroying men is not the way so he says let's adopt them and use them rather than killing them are you are you getting my mystery tonight Bible says it has been given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom there are things you understand that the devil will run away from you because he knows that light has brought everything that is darkness to bear are you getting my point now the problem with we preachers is that we just cut a lot of stories and tell people things that when they join the puzzles together it doesn't make sense listen listen I think I was talking to um the, the the music director and and the worship team chairman they came over to my place and i told them that i've been criticized for a lot of things one of it is this faith thing i believe in faith but i've said this thing again and again years ago that faith doesn't have to be on something you don't understand are you getting my point the true concept of faith is not just built on shadows that cannot be understood i said it last week no pilot sits on a plane and says passengers i trust god that will arrive safely i've never learned how to fly this plane but you guys just sit back sit back and 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 and, and, and enjoy there's jehovah Jireh, there's jehovah sikenu there's our banner and all of that and then the people sit down and say hallelujah let's just be confessing we will arrive we will arrive plane corporate we are now at 3,000 feet nobody does that are you getting my point now so faith is not a mystery it has been turned to look like anything in the kingdom you just understand just you don't understand just accept by faith have you had teachings like that God said it I may not understand it I don't care I want I don't want to understand it all I know is that Satan is the bad guy Jesus is the bad guy we are for Jesus let's win him this is what Americans are are shipping into Nigeria and we are laughing and receiving it and holding massive conventions and misleading people whereas the bible says do not be unaware of the stratomai satan is not an idiot he has a, a strategy this guy stayed close to the presence of god are you learning something tonight so you see it nimrod kush he said go to let us build a city build a city again the same city that Cain tried to build and then the judgment of Noah cancelled everything now he says let us build a city and let us make a name for ourselves listen when you study Bible history please listen I want to show you the origin of occultism and witchcraft are you following me now don't say it does not concern you the word is making you mature believers are you getting my point now do you know the origin of this thing we call occultism and witchcraft nimrod kush according to bible history are you, was the son of kush who married a woman called samiramai are you getting me and because listen please this is very very important samiramai was a witch these were people that were possessed they were incarnates of hell are you getting my point envoys that wanted to continue the agenda of god samira my killed kush her husband are you getting me and satan came and interplayed this thing satan came and made nimrod to believe that in this new move and in this kingdom he was going to make him lord he was going to be great and the price for that is that he will aberrate 
the normal progression of of human beings and then nimrod married his mother are you getting my point now so nimrod married are you seeing how satan was twatting the the do i call it the genetic code of human beings nimrod married his mother can you imagine now the son i don't know what what they're going to call the son now huh his mother is still his grandmother as ugly as it is listen this was the mystery of what began to happen to nimrod nimrod was a hunter of souls his job was to exert so much influence that he would bring people to himself because in revelation when he began to tell us about this mystery babylon and all the commodities she does business with it called the souls of men is that true is that true there's no time you see this time thing i wish like i feel like possessing this watch praise god <laughs> you just sing praise and worship and it's 10 o'clock <laughs> praise god kai this time is limited bear with us honestly these are not the kinds of things that you don't just come and share a message and it's boiling in my spirit because i want us to get it praise the lord are you understanding my story all through scripture when you trace you will see that this spirit looks for women in every generation that will represent its operation and look for men that will compromise are you getting me that was where witchcraft and so on and so forth started and then all these things called divination and necromancers all of these things happened when saul was king there's no time but i hope you read your bible very well you remember that remember when saul was king saul dealt with diviners and necromancers is that true he frustrated them so much according to scripture there was only one woman that was left one sorcerer one necromancer and the bible says a time came when saul slept and he deviated all right he didn't use that exact word but i'm just using it when saul deviated from the things of god he went to go and consult her is it in your bible and when she met him he he, he concealed himself and she said ah don't disturb me Saul is Saul has made life bad for us no business in this city again and he said no problem I vow I will not tell Saul and he said whose spirit should I invoke I'm going to show you how men of God operate what you call the prophetic that they invoke the spirit of the dead correct it's happening in many churches somebody dies and they invoke the spirit of that dead person i want to show you how they use necromancy and when they do that they invoke that and the bible says she invoked in her vision she was seeing an old man coming and saul and saul told her i said who do you, do you see him tell me about his appearance and saul from and samuel now seemingly from the vision told her the man that is standing with you is saul and she turned she said ah, ah are you not Saul? He said, ah, sorry, it's true. I'm Saul. But call me the spirit of Samuel. You think that was Samuel? He looked like Samuel. Talked like Samuel. Where did these spirits come from? I want to show you. See, it didn't start with Africa. So don't let westernization tell you these things are unnecessary. They have been there in scripture. And if we don't gain knowledge of this truth, we will die like mere men. hallelujah help us lord diviners and different people let me tell you something that happened see most of these entities that you call how many of you have heard of demons being disembodied spirits have you heard that word disembodied spirits what does that mean that means that there are spirits that do not have a body to find expression is that true that means they are consistently under frustration jesus himself taught us that when that spirit leaves a man it becomes restless because they need material medium to communicate there is a law in the earth realm that if you do not have a body you cannot function here are you getting my point let me tell you how this demon started i hope we have time can i talk to you 
see the bible says listen demons are not the uh, they are not the only wicked entities in the satanic kingdom demons are just a class of wicked spirits there are others for instance principalities they are not demons are you getting me i have come to the end of myself take over jehovah i have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself listen I hope you believe what I'm telling you. Listen. How many of you have seen certain people, maybe those who do a lot of occultic things, when they leave their body, they make sure they close the room so that nobody comes to push their body. You know why? Because they must return the same way they left. If you shift their body, they are not dead, but the spirits cannot return to the body again are you understanding what i'm saying there are many spiritual entities like that in the spirit realm please listen to me i want to tell you some things that will bless you we said this is a year of light this is solid meat light that keeps you in command dominion will happen naturally you don't claim it light brings you into it are you getting my point we are we are demystifying this deity called satan once and for all so that you will know that the church will truly be a victorious church listen satan led these demon spirits are you getting i mean angels now are you getting my point now this was what because it is within the character of angels to translate themselves is that true that means they can change state there are different kinds of angels maybe when we deal with angels we talk there is a northern army there are different there are messenger angels there are cherubs there are seraphs there are different kinds of angels now satan led a campaign and told these guys together with I've, I've, i said it the last time apollyon leviathan have you heard of all these spirits they were real spirits together satan didn't just do alone it was supposed to be that he would spearhead the rebellion and if it worked it would be chop by chop so all the demons that helped him are you getting my point now <laughs> when you read the book of psalms and see the things that the psalmist began to speak you will see that the spirit of revelation was upon him hallelujah are you getting blessed can we continue all right please make sure you are listening this is not let me tell you something with revelation if you get too used to it the devil can use it and kill you are you getting my point he won't kill you just by oppressing you he will make you so puffed up revelation that should deliver you is not delivering you but anybody who wants to talk to you you will begin to break these scriptures and say let me give you a rundown of how everything started and then it's not help. this is what is happening so we must open up ourselves and please listen i'm serious and contend for change this is not to equip you to now run to your fellowship or your church and say for the next four months i have a message and this is what people do and then start running and say ah i must do this i must do this there are angels there's apollyon have you heard of him and they say wow from whence come at this kind we have not seen it in this fashion the goal of revelation is not entertainment brothers and sisters is to equip you with light that dispels every darkness hallelujah now listen these angels translated themselves are you getting my point in the days of noah and they started having intercourse with women physical women that means you know that the child they will give birth to will not be pure human that's the origin of giants are you seeing that that's why the children that they had six fingers six to superhuman abilities can i surprise you that breed is still in the earth today the 
this is what scientists saw that they call x-men what is x former what was the revelation behind their producing these films you were just watching and eating popcorn in cinema and nodding whereas this is a mystery they know a war is coming all of these scientific films keep telling you a war is coming and that battle is between mankind and another race this was the whole subject of lord of the rings and they had to consult other kingdoms and bring their kings together and it was a human one little boy called Frodo that carried the ring, a symbol of authority. All the other kingdoms backed him up. These things are spiritual messages. These scientists through, through zodiac and, and astrology and all kinds of divination, they can peep into spiritual things. It's not that they know the future. Are you getting me? How do I put it now? Help me. Look at me. How many of you know which country is ahead of Nigeria, time-wise? What? What is UK? How can you say UK? Us, let's, let's just assume, please listen, we, we don't have time. Let's assume Australia. How many of you know that when Australia is saying 18th, we are still in 17th? So that ability to peep ahead, that's what happens in the realm of the spirit. Because of the regulation of times and seasons. Are you getting my point? It, this is what is adumbrated in geography that it is possible for one region to begin to access certain things before the other one it happens in the spirit too and this is the principle of divination help us so God Take me to the place, the place you are, that secret place. Take us, Lord, that's where I want to be. Take me to the place, the place you are. The secret, place. the secret place that's where i want to be that's where i want to be let's rush error number one i touched it in the realities of heaven and hell but i just feel like touching it again because the message didn't strike the chord the way i want so i want to touch on the issue again messages from hell divine realms that's number one error that needs to be L listen to me i don't know how many women have shaved their hair sold their cover shoes and did a lot of things because listen this is a very serious message right now certain people claim they went to heaven or went to hell listen i explain all these planes to you and you will see sense in what i'm saying now and they brought the core message in the body of christ now is not the bible again is who came with what from where are you getting my point these are the deceiving spirits and the doctrines of demons remember the bible says if god did not cut the time even we the elect can be deceived what kind of great deception can make people to see a lie and take it as true are you getting my point it must be a great deception so what is it the bible says or the people story somebody just comes back oh i went to hell and then you print cds you print books now there are a few people who will trust their experiences very few as a matter of fact they were the initial people people like like um what's her name mary baxter and so on and so forth all these many things that they do now those people when they came back they even gave the cds free because of how much they wanted to be dissociated with this world huh but right now what we have is nonsense and there are many church pastors in an attempt to show piety and response to spiritual things this is the result of sleep they invite all these people these, these people and they come back uh, they come to pulpit and cry ah i went to hell i saw your mother i thought your mother died she gave me a message it's her name not jane you say yes my mother's name is jane i saw jane i saw jane 
she was crying in hell and she could talk crying have you have you seen a house catching fire have you seen the people inside listen please this is not criticism please i'm just addressing something this is the spirit of elijah are you getting what i'm saying A lot of people came with revelations. Those of you inside, outside, if you are hearing me, shout praise the Lord. Listen. These revelations are destroying churches right now. Destroying families. Are you getting my point? People came, ah, you went to hell. Why did you go to hell? Your skirts didn't reach here. Why did you go to hell? Okay, um... This pastor, you are supposed to drop five naira. What, where is the five naira? That's where you are going. Somebody went to hell seemingly and brought back the list of the names of almost every man of God alive right now. That they are sure candidates of hell. This is somebody that got born again. He was not up to three weeks and he seemingly went to hell. I will show you the mystery of what is happening. I wish we have time tonight. I would have shown you something powerful. It's the strategy of the devil. The people are innocent. Are you getting my point? Don't be angry at the people. They do not even know that they themselves are under deception. Paul says, I was caught up to the third heaven. That means there are other heavens. There is the astral realm. There are a lot of other realms. There are galaxies. All of these galaxies and planets. I hope you know some of them have inhabitants. This is the mystery of aliens. This is the mystery of aliens. There is a lot of story we don't know in the earth. They just gave birth to you in the middle of history. It's what they taught you from social studies to what again? Social science. History, government. And then you read political science or whatever it is. And you believe you know the world. No, there is a lot more. There is a lot more. Hallelujah. There is a lot more. There is a lot in this earth realm that we have. There are portals in this realm. There are many people you see in the earth realm that are not pure human beings. They are moving like you. They talk. You've eaten with some of them in the restaurant. They are not pure breeds. These are agents of darkness preparing for the revival that is coming. I read an article as far back as 19... I have the documentary as a matter of fact about people who went underground. Is that true? They went underground. And they saw a place designed by aliens that can see 20,000 people. And there is an altar in the middle. When you stand in that altar and talk, they will hear you everywhere. No mic. Verified scientifically. Don't you know there is a world under the earth? Philippians chapter 2. That every knee is not just talking about hell alone. What have they not told us, brothers and sisters, that is responsible? I will show you how this applies. So that you will see how your family got into it. Your innocent father from the village was just moving around. Nothing missing, nothing broken. He entered into what he didn't understand. Look at what a lot of believers are suffering in today. And one of the error, one of the error that I wanted to talk about is the negligence of spiritual laws. Many of us have, listen, listen, and I don't say this to criticize. There is an exaggeration of what we call the grace message. I've said this thing again and again. Please don't be offended. I'm just telling you the truth in love. There is a jurisdiction to which when the grace message steps out, it will be misleading. There are people right now that they almost don't read the Old Testament. You open, they say, what are you doing with the law? I have a question. What is law? What really is law? What is the cause of the law that Christ redeemed us from? Is it Ten Commandments? Is it other mosaic laws? Or Ten Commandments plus them? Is it spiritual laws? A lot of people speak and say, ah, oh, all of this. 
law is gone there's nothing law nothing again but you believe in the law of sowing and reaping and you teach give and it will be given and a lot of people say even god cannot do anything so which part of the law has been abolished we'll talk about that in another teaching we have a lot of series this is a year of light we trust god to open our eyes not to go and start criticizing people but to be the light a reference the devil is in trouble this year there are things i will explain to you you will never be afraid of death again there are things i will explain to you you will know that even this mystery thing called deliverance you will understand who are these people that follow people quietly to church and come and sit down and later you say in the name of jesus and all of these kinds of things we will explain it when you understand this i'm telling you you will just start laughing you won't even pray let me tell you there are two ways to bind the devil one is prayer the other is revelation when authentic light enters you you grow out of some things at once deliverance is going on right now it's just that many people their concept of deliverance is ah you fall down i want to cough i want to no no it's not it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do those things light is what drives away darkness permanently you see that's why if if i deliver dosing for instance i lay hands on her and she rolls 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 and stands up listen and there is no light do you know why certain deliverances are so easy it's not because the man is powerful the demons are mocking the man he has no spiritual intelligence they just stroll out and allow him to go and he feels wow at once as soon as the person goes out they use anger or something and enter back together with the seven that they have gathered this is why you find out that there are many churches and men of god struggling with deliverance again because the whole service from morning till night is deliverance there is a balance he sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them but my only trouble is what people call word is not what god is calling word because their word is not healing their word is not delivering that means it's not the word look at me ella is a fair lady if i tell you ella is coming to see you expect a fair lady tying something in her head with with a ribbon or what is that thing you see that are you getting me if i suddenly decide to come am i ella if i tell you my name is ella this is how many people's revelation i'm sending the word it will do this right now it's not doing it and the bible says if it is the word some things should happen so if it's not happening it's not the word it may be scripture the word listen the word is not just this are you getting me because until the apostles came there was no manuscript but the people understood the word so what did they call their word what did they call their word of god it said ye are clean through the words that i've spoken to you that word can clean you that's what he's doing now So divine revelations let's just look at one scripture luke 16. let's settle this issue once and for all please can we look at just one scripture we may not be able to touch the honestly there are three issues i thought we'll be able to talk about okay we're there there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple royalty and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day 20 and there was a certain beggar named lazarus listen every time jesus mentioned name it was not a parable necessarily it was a real experience you understand in jesus's parables he described men by what they did not their names which was laid at his gate are you seeing the contrast now it says full of what source verse 21 and desiring to be fed with the crumbs so on and so forth 24 okay no 23 i saw something i'm looking for there ah we've gone far can we go to 22 let's start from there 
and it came to pass that who died that's lazarus right lazarus died and was carried by the angels to abraham's bosom that's another issue there hallelujah and the rich man also died and was buried so two of them died they've now left the earth let's see the drama that happened 23 and in hell so a definite place hell is that true he lifted up his eyes being in torment and seeth Abraham afar off. Alright? That's Abraham's bosom. And I'll tell you why. And Lazarus, hey, I had a revelation, brothers and sisters, that opened me up. Do you know that unlike the teachings we have been teaching, that Abraham could not give birth because he was impotent? It's not true. Abraham slept with Hagar. Did she get pregnant? What is the impotency about him? This was simple logic. I said, come on. Ah, is this not the Abraham we are saying? It is the deadness of his body. And this, this guy slept with, with uh, Hagar. And Hagar was strategically positioned by Satan. In that place. See, when I show you these things and as we explore, you will see. Ah, may God help and redefine our Christianity. You will see that Jacob was not a thief. Jacob was replacing what happened between Isaac and Ishmael you see that that thing that looked like <laughs> that's why it's not called God of Abraham Isaac and Esau it's called God of Ab didn't, is God blind didn't he see Esau it's called God of Abraham Isaac and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torment and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So, it was in Abraham's bosom. Alright, 23. And he cried and said, this is the man now in hell. Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the, fin dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Um, that flame is not just fire like you know. Because I hope you know their physical bodies are in the earth here. So what kind of fire will torture their spirit body? It's not just the kind of your fire here. Spirits can walk through this fire. Are you getting me? This is a strange kind of fire. It's a fire that causes thirst. When it destroys you, it not only are you going through pain, but it makes sure that there is thirst. It can absorb every thing and cause you with the feeling of thirst and it's very frustrating look at this guy he didn't say let him send um something to quench the fire he was asking for a drop of water and abraham said son remember in your lifetime you received good things this guy received evil but now he's comforted and thou art tormented 26 now divine revelation please listen and beside this there is a gulf between or so that they cannot pass here and there and there. We'll talk about this another time. Hades, Abraham's bosom, and so on and so forth. 27. Then he said, listen, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him back to the earth. Are you seeing now? Send him back to the earth to my father's house. So let's see. See, let's walk with what the Bible says. Is that true? Do you believe the word of God? You believe is the final authority. And you believe is a more sure word of prophecy. So let's examine the word of God. 28. For I have five brethren. That he may testify unto them. Lest they also come into the place of torment. So what was his request? Please. Come back to the earth. With divine revelation. Abi, Go to my family and tell them. Ah! I just came back from hell. If they hear you their hearts will melt and they will change i don't want them to come here 29 what happened abraham said they have moses and the prophets let them hear them in other words it is not god's original strategy to bring people back from the world of the dead to come and bring revelation to the inhabitants of the earth abraham was saying listen this is not a normal route of god's dealings with people to make them grow 
are you getting what i'm saying abraham said they have moses the law and the prophets they are they are preachers already they should listen to them verse 30 and he said nay father abraham but if one went on to them from the, from the dead he said what they will repent is that true 31 and he said unto them if they hear not moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead listen so these teachings of people going and coming say they went to the dead and they came back with messages and they saw this and that and that the bible tells us the living and the dead have no relationship is it in your bible is it in your bible that there is something that separates the living and the dead it is appointed unto man to die once and after that the judgment i believe in the resurrection are you getting what i'm saying but by divination people's spirits have been invoked and a lot of things have happened can i tell you many of these places these people went to were certain realms in the spirit they had never been there please get what i'm saying some of these beings they encountered were not jesus christ they encountered spirits if you see a spirit in the realm of the spirit you will still need spiritual intelligence to relate with them because satan can appear as an angel of light jesus said it when he sent the 70 when they return he said i've seen satan's next strategy the next strategy is not to be a demon again he has translated himself as an angel of light and he's now going to go to pulpits as angel of light he was revealing to them a strategy he wasn't just telling them that satan has just fallen like that mm -mm hallelujah satan saw that jesus could give his authority to men and they could legislate on his behalf he gave satan an idea of the next strategy he said why not i translate myself and come as an angel of light wear suit and start gathering these people rather than killing them let me use them so jesus began to tell the disciples i'm praying for you immediately i've seen something that will happen satan has now changed his state to become an angel of light and he's moving around as elders in churches moving around as overseers moving around as different things and recruiting men who are entering deception and delusion without knowing but we are this army that god is granting us light alongside many other remnants across the surface of the earth and we are the ones who will break the hold of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me show you one more scripture. These are the scriptures that talk about out of body experiences. Paul now, the apostle himself. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Please let's rush. One error we have to kick out of the body of Christ. The messages the people bring notice listen the bible says you shall know a tree by what is fruit that's whatever proceeds from that tree is that not true that means like who who said it i, I think it was mike that said everything god creates he leaves an imprint of himself if god gives you a word and is from him there will be something about his karagma on that word how many people tell me the truth have been comforted by the recent divine revelation teachings how many that you know there are so many people who have gotten into religiosity people locked up their businesses people packed out of school other people went somewhere people just killed a lot of things fashion designers stopped their businesses they are broke now they are suffering because they told them that anything anything at all oh if you see Yvonne, it came from the the marine power if you understand satan you know that he does not have the power of creation he has an ability to mimic and corrupt that which is created are you getting my point now I, I, you can everybody has his personal belief and all of that i'm not but i'm just saying the reasons people are giving there is only one reason why people are in hell rejecting the gift of salvation that jesus brings are you getting my point oh a man of god did this 
this water was for bishop and he quickly drank it and when he was going out guy hit him and he found himself that means all of us are going to hell you see that is killing what the bible calls the assurance of salvation so many people even preachers they don't know again whether they are saved or not hallelujah many people don't know whether they are saved or not and now the only way because that's the next thing i wanted to talk about is the false presentation of the gospel of holiness because there is the authentic gospel of holiness i tell you this one may is probably one of the biggest disasters that has happened to the church what has been taught to be the gospel of holiness is not what jesus taught are you getting my point now because a lot of people believe they are going to go to heaven based on the things that they have kept and avoided or done this and that no sir hallelujah you have no right to take a revelation and begin to yoke it on people based on your perception of truth you see let me tell you something the army that god is raising is an army that must remain as students we must create a posture that shows that we are students such that you are not ashamed to confront the revelations you have held as authentic when you see a higher light we must have that humility there's nothing embarrassing to accept that look i may not have seen it in this light i was blind but now i see the bible talks about a man called apollos he was a learned man in acts 18 the last few verses and the bible says but you knew only the baptism of john is that true and then aquila and priscilla came they called him and they expounded to him more perfectly and he was humble enough to receive and then he now went to the temple and began to debate and argue intelligently there are lots of people in the body of christ who are under bondage terrible bondage that innocently came but it's a product of the spirit of deception for instance there are many people who believe that if i let me use a lady come if i give this lady a hug more ah this this may be a problem i've done something i've compromised it can cost me my salvation and so because i have to shift to that religious mold listen please i'm not criticizing any any church are you following me now this is an apostolic teaching it's a teaching to the body of christ salvation is personal your dealings with god is personal and it's time for us to kick the walls that are stopping us from entering the authentic experience of the kingdom because of this right now the guy can sit down he does not yet have the ability to conquer lust but religious mold has made him to know or to feel that okay you must confirm and then people are looking at him and he looks like a sanctimonious brother whereas he's dying with masturbation because that's the only thing he can do and the devil says this is exactly what i want and then he uses it to bring condemnation and the guy gets up and before men he's wonderful and he's struggling and the sister is struggling and they go back and keep doing it there are all kinds of atrocities happening in our churches pastors sleeping with members many things are happening everybody carries a nice cloth and we come and hide under this demon called religion hallelujah that does not mean we'll be lawless this is the balance again because some other people in an attempt to address this just like me they tell people okay fine don't be religious don't do this dress anyhow do what you want to do say anything so you can be in the church i can be preaching and a lady can just come and i'll just hold her give her a nice peck and say sweet how you look sweet and you sit down those garbages will be part of what will exit out of the body of christ there is a lot of another dimension of imbalance are you getting my point now we have all kinds of carelessness 
I believe that these things are not the things that determine salvation. But then there, there are some things that just don't make sense. A man of God comes hanging all kinds of chains around him with all kinds of rings, tearing his jeans, sagging them. I mean, I'm not talking of a guest, some a little youth meeting or boot camp. This is the, the, the default. He's the overseer of the ministry. He comes with his glasses, comes and all. That is nonsense. It's a spirit of seduction. Hallelujah. A woman comes on stage and she's preaching. Half of the message, the brothers are not following. Their minds are, they are just struggling. Lord, I will make heaven. I need to grow. This is another balance. So let me balance it very quickly. Because there are a group of immature revivalists arising. In their bid to contain these things in the flesh. I just telling people, be as lawless as you can be. That's a sign that we are out of the law. There is a balance. We are a disciplined army. We are not idiots. Liberty is not rebellion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians 12 from verse 3 to 4. Did I say? From verse 3 to 4. Verse 3. And I knew such a man, Paul speaking, listen please. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. 4. How that he was caught up into paradise and had what? unspeakable words which are not lawful for men to what is that in your bible that means all these ones that people go have you not seen that many times when the apostles see revelation he tells them seal this is for an appointed time but now people come back with every message this is deception are you getting my point now there are a few people however who we have judged their revelations based on the integrity of God's word. And we have found that their messages have brought healing and hope to the body of Christ. For such kind of people, we commend them and we endorse them. But even at that point, their word does not become the final, the final, uh, what do we call it now? This thing that they, yardstick. I cannot begin to run my ministry after Mary Baxter's vision. Are you getting my point? I've had a lot of visions. I live in the realm of visions. I can never run ministry just based on visions. Ask the leaders. Every time I see anything, no matter how authentic the experience is, the word of God must prove it, not confirm it. Prove it. Prove it. The Bible didn't say confirm all things. It said prove all things. If you are looking for confirmation, you will find it. You will find a scripture that endorses a man sleeping with a woman although they are not married. It's in the Bible. The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it speak any language you want. The Bible did not say use the Bible just to confirm things. Prove it. Test the spirit behind it. Everybody now is looking for confirmation. So we get the revelation from all kinds of realms. That's the reason why you go to native doctors and the rest, you see Bibles there. Because since it's Bible you want, they keep it there for you. When it's time to do the spell, they say, lay your hands on the Bible and swear that you will be faithful. And you swear, but they will still do their demonic things. And you will be convinced that because there was a Bible there, it was God. Because of this deception. You don't use the Bible for confirmation. The Bible proves all things, yet nothing proves it. When I talk of Bible, I'm not just talking about the error of men. I'm talking about the edited spirit word that is given. Hallelujah. What do I talk about again? I want to show you something. One other error in the body of Christ is neglecting the reality of spiritual laws. I said it. 
Everybody say it after me, both inside and outside. Spiritual laws abound. They exist. They are real. As real as physical laws. Look at me. Do you know why God did not kill Cain when he sinned? Because he knew that there were spiritual laws at work. Are you getting my point? And those laws will catch up with him. Are you following me now? When you violate certain things and some things happen to you, it's not like God brought it. There are laws. Are you getting my point? Jump from this building now, praying in tongues as you are jumping, for no reason. It's not like they threw you to destroy you that you expect, you expect the hand of God. Just jump from it. What do you think will happen to you? Because of the existence of a law. Now watch this. Regardless of that law, a plane still moves. Is that true? Does the movement of the plane stop the fact that there is that law? It means it's operating by another law that shields it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Curses are real. Yokes are real. Manifestations of witchcraft in lives and families are real. They are very real. Listen, these are spiritual laws. What light does for us is to tap into what Christ has done and exempt ourselves. Are you getting me? Let's look at one scripture and then we'll pray. That does it for today. Just one scripture. I want to show you a scripture. Psalm 64. Let's trace these activities of those we call familiar spirits. Every time I teach, it's always in my culture to try to bring balance. There is a lot of junk about deliverance, demonology, and so on and so forth. However, I believe that there is an accurate perspective that we can look at to gain understanding. Hear my voice, O oh God. This was the psalmist praying by revelation. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy too. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Verse 3. Hmm. Who wet their tongue like a sword. That means these guys speak certain things and bend their bows to shoot their arrows even bitter words verse 4 he said that they may shoot in secret at the perfect suddenly they do shoot at him and fear not verse 5 it says they encourage themselves in an evil matter they come they commune of lyingness privately they say who shall see them six they do what they search out who are these people that search out they go to an extent where did they write it that they go back to archives and search out iniquities of families are you following me now this is in your bible they search out iniquities he say they accomplish a what diligent search they are meticulous when God opened my eyes to this it surprised me are you getting my point now have you read that word blotting out every handwriting so there are handwritings correct there are ordinances the Bible says they search out iniquities hallelujah maybe at another time I will continue this teaching of these angels that I told you because when they fell listen they wanted to translate themselves back to the angelic state they did not know that God had the power to stop them so in an attempt to translate themselves back they were stopped they are the ones who have become demons today are you getting me so they need material bodies to find expression this is the basis of traditionalists this is the basis of a lot of things that we celebrate in the rampant outbreak of the prophetic that we call word of knowledge you see it they search out 
I'm not saying everything is corrupt. Are you getting my point now? But I'm telling you that many of these things. Otherwise, how can a herbalist look at you? How many of you have seen these guys that scam and swindle people in a car? And sometimes they will give you an, they will take you to one baba, right? And give you an accurate word of knowledge. How did they know? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. So there must be some spiritual system. They search out iniquities. It is on the basis of this search that Lucifer, Satan, the accuser of the brethren. Are you getting me now? Based on these findings, this is what he reports. And he says, God, according to your justice, this is what has happened. That means there is a law that should follow this family. Are you getting my point? And suddenly you find out women are not getting married. People are not getting married. Things are not working. Nothing is working. Anybody comes to you for a relationship, what will happen to him in two weeks? Nobody will tell him. He will pack his load by himself and go. And you are wondering what in the world is going on. Listen, listen. It is demonic. Many of us and our loved ones are victims of these things but they've told you hallelujah just believe it's not there again you say it's not there again you went back it's still there this thing is following you you see patterns i told you this thing satan wants transgenerational allegiance many students you are very brilliant like exam right now you go to the class and you find out that you black out in all sincerity other people think you are lazy you know you are not lazy there is a puzzle somewhere you are trying to understand now you come to the ministers and they tell you did you read yes they say all right i speak over you it is well and demons just mock the men of god and say look at how shallow and the student goes back and gets the same kind of tragedy but when there is light darkness must bow this is the reason why you are hearing testimonies of sudden admissions sudden this and that see brothers and sisters i taught you that every time you speak the realm of the spirit will check what revelation you are standing on are you seeing why some people's words are not powerful because when you speak the devil knows you don't even know what you are saying you are just carrying the delusion of faith and you're just saying i speak leave this family now based on what what is the spiritual intelligence that sponsors that statement when you have it there is light in your spirit and it is that light that will force that dimension of darkness that's why sometimes you can see as we are teaching the power of god just breaks out and demons are living or maybe during the miracle service these things are not magic it's a product of light are you getting my point as you're sitting under this teaching now a lot of things are suddenly coming in your mind are you getting me now it's now making sense to you why your father was walking although an elder in church he grew to a certain height and he fell and that's exactly what has been happening he went for deliverance and fell down he got up and the same thing has happened with that it has even gotten worse have you seen people who come and receive some miracles and go back and their families become worse it's a spiritual blackmail to discredit the ministry of the men of god so that they will say they got powers from darkness not everybody got power from that are you getting my point now you see how complicated the body of christ is at this point that's why we need accuracy please don't miss the meetings because there is a there is a construction there is a we want to go back to this foundation what is responsible for the darkness in our lives nothing just happens brothers and sisters as you're seated right now you know that this word you are hearing is the deliverance of your family this word you are hearing some of us who are parents here and are seated we know that this is the puzzle behind the things that are happening hallelujah but it will take light brothers and sisters it takes spiritual intelligence during the monday counseling i was ministering to a lady 
and as soon as she came and I casted out the spirit and at once the lady just lay down and the Lord opened my eyes at once and I saw the spirit in the realm of the spirit it was laughing and I said the Lord rebuke you the protocol were here and the, the lady jacked back up somebody would have said thank you Jesus and he just get up say, ah, that's it and the demons would say Kai men of God of these days they are not powerful at all Say after me, the light of God is upon me, taking away every darkness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I become a, an agent of healing, prosperity, deliverance, and grace to all around me and my family members. Hallelujah. This is what is responsible for many things in our families. This is why you find out that certain tribes and certain geographical places are prone to certain attitudes. We say these things do not happen, but we are seeing it. There is a spirit upon the continent of Africa that is responsible for what is happening. Hallelujah. You see people come from certain places. You see people come from Plateau State. You see people come from Kaduna State, from Kogi State, from Lagos, from the riverine areas. You see patterns that are happening. Yet we say, oh, it, there's, there's nothing wrong. I'm okay. Just declare that I'm okay. And you say, I'm okay. And the demons say, I'm fine too. I'm fine with you. I like this revelation you're having. I'm fine with it. But when light strikes, see, there are many of you based on this revelation you will start calling home and your parents will start telling you what is this dream that i'm having what is, you will see that there are shiftings know that is a response to what is happening it's already happening in some families right now you are seeing it you something you just know you can't explain but you know that certain foundations these demon spirits are saying who is this who is this this is le a level of light that is notable and they, they begin to walk. But you see, light does not beg darkness. Authentic light comes and comes to conquer. Hallelujah. This is the mystery behind this healing of HIV and all of these things you are seeing. When you understand them, no man of God will boast and brag in himself. Because in all sincerity, when you know this, it's just a proper application of spiritual intelligence. Hallelujah. It's like clapping for yourself because you took your bath. You say, what? I'm so impressed that I can bath. What is special about that? You can clap for a baby because you say, this is amazing. Ha! Ah, you bath yourself. The child will say, yes. Yeah. Say, clap for yourself. And he claps. Now, imagine that Sam comes to see me and I just said I, I finished Bapi and Sam will say boy am I impressed a time will come what we celebrate as power will take another dimension what men of God have camped around it will be ordinary people who will be doing it because of the higher dimensions of grace are you getting me time for miracle service we'll just say you go and bring those who you heal, delivered, prayed for, and come. We testify together and receive greater grace. Do you know the training you are receiving now is such that it puts you to work immediately? And your Jerusalem is your family. Anyone who is not concerned about his family is, so, is a sign that something is wrong with you. Bishop, a pretty lady with nobody to marry her get it into the 40s nobody to marry her people say it's just like that the ratio of men to women is so on and so forth what is all that but when you sustain spiritual intelligence you can say light be and it will become hallelujah praise the lord rise up on your feet let's pray i want us to take some time please pray as you pray tonight, sudden things will begin to happen in your life.
please everybody participate in the prayer as you pray tonight something will begin to happen in your families you will begin to feel the spiritual shift the devil must give up on you this year and your family members hold hands together and begin to pray in tongues please instrumentalists help us hold hands together and just begin to pray in tongues please pray seriously prayer is a spiritual law it has nothing to do with convenience you're not filled with the holy ghost as we pray let the power of god come upon you that you begin to utter those mysteries Please pray. You will contend until victory comes. You will contend. Outside, make sure you are praying. Outside, make sure you are praying. Rekoto prekete leba kapa taka tabra gele balada dabas. Rekoto broska pakata deka tabra kete leka maka bresko prende kozeba. Every second lebo kosho prekele balada ba. Mabra tosko pa ikeya. Every second prekete leko tos maka braka tale koto prekele balada ba. Meke broske talia ba. Arise, arise by light. By revelation, arise, shake up darkness, shake up darkness, reketeko preketeleketeka, pray and say I'm changing, I'm changing, my status is changing, reketekelebaha, there's no more decline, I'm on my way to better days, to the life God designed for me. Hallelujah! The answer to the tragedy of my family is already unfolding. This age-long puzzle is opening. Rekete kete koko to balada bakada bara. Nam brakata balada bash. Rekete kere boso prekete. Come on, pray in the spirit. Activate breakthroughs in the spirit. You are praying out of the depth of revelation. Rekete kete kete prakata balada balada ba. Mam prakata preke shekete. Rekata prakata balada bash. Rambo koso prekete. Rekete ke bo shapari ba. Mam preke tele bo koso preke de bosh. Please no looking at one another. Pray, pray, pray. Reke bosh ko prakata balada ba. Your flesh may be weak, but pray is a sacrifice. Is a sacrifice. Is a sacrifice. Prayer is a sacrifice. It's not about convenience. It's about a higher revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. You are going to pray. Hallelujah. And you are going to say, Lord, I dispel darkness out of my life. Are you hearing me? You are going to say, Lord, by the light, whatever represents darkness in my life, it bows tonight. Lift your voice and pray. It could be sickness in your body. It could be a yoke of bondage. Satan is only as powerful as the darkness in us permits him. Pray. Let light shine. God who had commanded light to shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts to grant unto us the knowledge of the glory of God 
are seen on the face of Jesus. Let there be light. 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 Prophesy. Light. Light to my family. Light. Prophesy. Light to your exams. Light to your academics. The powers that be, they must bow tonight by the force of revelation. Man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall live by every revelation. Revelation brings life. It brings light. It brings power. Pray. Babylon is falling. That corrupt system. That secrecy of evil. That genetic code of wickedness. That is responsible for the life that people are living. The wickedness, the pain. Cause that system. That that one must fall by a rod of a higher priesthood. This is not the ironic priesthood. Our confidence is tied to a higher priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. It's a priesthood of glory. It's a priesthood of power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're still praying. You're going to mention every area of your life one by one. And you're going to say, Lord, the chains, they are broken tonight. While we sing, play that song, break every chain. Many of you will be surprised at the testimonies you will have. These are not testimonies that are happening by mistake. You know how they are happening. So you can reproduce it in the life of others. Lift your voice. Chains. I prophesy. Be broken. Chains of delay. Chains of delay. Chains of barrenness. Chains of fear. Chains of failure. Let the glory of the Lord arise. Let the glory of the Lord arise. Chains. Chains of pornography. Chains of masturbation. Chains of wickedness. Chains of sickness. Chains of joblessness. Chains of failure. Chains of witchcraft. Break every chain. By the power of the blood of Jesus. Break every chain. We contend by revelation. We storm the gates of hell. We storm the gates of hell. By the power of light. We storm Babylon. We prophesy your doom in our lives. Babylon the great. Falling. Babylon the great. Falling. prayer points hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord please pair yourselves into two the bible says if any two shall agree as touching anything you are going to pray for your families right now this year we must carry our family members along listen listen pharaoh said i will let you go but leave the children and the animals moses said no way we are going together. I can't go and allow my sister. Who will save them? You can't go and let your loved ones die like that. Are you getting my point? That prophetic light will shine until every member of your family is part of this. You are going to pray. Confront every darkness in your family. You know the darkness. Lift your voice and pray. The darkness of witchcraft and culture. I contend. Come on, pray. There's no pretense in this place. Pray. 
our family members have suffered. Be sent to Lord Savior by the power of the Holy Ghost. We confront you knowing that we have authority. We expose the doers of evil. We expose the doers of iniquity. We expose the spirit of death, the spirit of failure, that invisible manifestation of darkness that is responsible for death, for barrenness, for miscarriages, for failure. Pray that limitation of poverty, confront poverty, that spirit, that yoke, that devilish device that has been projected to your family that is responsible for the financial tragedy. Confront it. It must bow to the power of light for the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend prophesy a recovery prophesy a recovery I call back opportunities for my family I call back I call back their spiritual sovereignty I call back their finances I call back the joy Hallelujah. One more prayer point and we're done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for Koinonia. We're going to say, Lord, let your light shine. People must be liberated. Are you hearing me? Let me tell you something. Listen. Hear me inside and outside. Every one of you who comes for this meeting, your coming alone is a miracle. Are you hearing me? If you know the powers of darkness, that if they had their way, would stop you from hearing what you are hearing. Ask the people that come for counseling. 90% of them tell you the morning for counseling something stops them or an accident and they almost capsize. The devil hates light. He loves argument. He loves religion. But this year, we are storming the gates of hell. Are you getting my point? A fearless generation. There are things that must be recovered. There is a destiny, the soul of the nation that we must recover. But it must start from us and our families. This is why we invest time to pray. We know the kind of ministry God has given us. That's why we pray. Are you getting my point? That's why we have a strong and healthy prayer department. We are not carried away by success. We are not carried away by crowd. We are not carried away by rema. Listen, when God commits to you, the transformation of the destinies of men, you must take it seriously. We are going to pray for koinonia. We are going to say, light, shine. Shine! Let the works of evil be exposed. Let believers be empowered by the light of God's word. Let this place remain that hell, the place of bread, the place of light. We will pay the price whatever it takes to access the depths of the spirit we will pay the price we will pay the price for the sake of destinies pray our heavens remain open in the name of jesus this remains a place of breakthrough a place of signs wonders deep mysteries of the kingdom our messages go far they cause revivals in campuses in families in cities let the angel of the lord that goes with our messages we command that the angels of god arise for our sake Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Before I make the altar call, let me speak over your life. You are committed to being very serious. I tell you, I was praying and I was telling God, I said, Lord, find seriousness in us. There's no room for joke. We will keep being serious. We will keep contending. While men slept, that means if you remain awake, you can be a pure breed indeed. The Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give thee light. Awake. Awake. I want to pray. As I pray, I'm going to command every dead spiritual life, every dead prayer life, whatever has killed your spiritual fervency in the name of the son of the living God I pray for you that a fire will come upon you and reignite your prayer life in the name of Jesus Christ whatever has killed your prayer life I confront it now I command those dry bones arise Whatever has killed your appetite, Rekoteke, Bakaboso Toketa, Nekete Leketa, let the fire of the Holy Ghost plant an appetite right now, right now in you for scripture. I impart the spirit of revelation upon you by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will have a passion to study scripture. You will get back your concordance. You will study scripture in the name of Jesus. I pray for access to light, access to the deep things of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, access to realms of power, realms of power, realms of breakthrough. Realms of revelation. May your words be seasoned with fire. You will begin to speak from today. And fire, fire, fire. I prophesy it. I prophesy it. The Bible says from his mouth, a double-edged sword came out. I release that sword. Let it enter you and make you a living wonder. Let your communications be deep in the name of Jesus. Those who are weary spiritually, those who have come to the end of themselves, is not backsliding. You've just tried. There is nothing else to sponsor a fresh hunger. I pray that tonight God will show you something that can keep you awake studying all night that God will show you a mystery man de parika. may God remove the veil from your eyes may you see what mortal men don't see may you hear sounds of the spirit I pray for utterance for you the capacity to communicate spiritual things accurately it's not about oratory it's a spiritual quality that helps you translate spiritual things to the understanding of men receive it in the name of Jesus I command every sick body be healed right now be healed every sickness here yeah. be healed you will walk away free tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for your exams. Whether you're writing exams or not, whether you're a student or not, lift your hands. You can connect. It's a corporate anointing. Hallelujah. There are people who have struggled with their exams. They've read and read right now as you are here. You don't even know if you are ready for your papers. But you know you are serious. Let's see the power that will stop you these exams. 
I pray for you. Kabagati preteke dabaladaba. Man take am brain dose palakataya. That angel that came to give Daniel understanding, he said, and I am come to give thee understanding. Father, I pray, according to the measure of grace that has been given unto me, let your people 